on that topic, you do have uh, a bit of an appreciation and connection with music. I saw you play some guitar a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, what what uh, can you put in like a philosophical sense, your connection to music, uh, what insights about life, mm -hmm. about just the way you see the world do you get from music? I think the role music has played in my life was originally motivated by sort of wanting to to prove things to myself. I really have no ear for music. I have a terrible <laughs> sense of pitch. And I think a lot of music relies on very standard teaching. If you think about uh, lessons, for example, music lessons, there's, there's sort of a, a routine to them, which is so archaic and traditional that there's no room for for de for deviation i think uh, all of that suggested to me that i would never have a relationship with music i loved listening to music it was just it was difficult to me it, was, it sort of saddened me um i wanted to know if there was any way i could build a connection to music given who i am my own idiosyncrasies um what challenges i have I decided to try to learn music theory before I touched an instrument. Uh, I think that gave me a very unique opportunity instead of spending my time fruitlessly at the beginning on the syntax of a particular instrument. This is how you, this is your posture on the piano. This is how you hold your fingers. Uh, I tried instead to learn what made music work. And the the wonderful thing about that was I'm pretty sure that any instrument with discrete notes is mine for the taking within a day or so of having the ability to to play with it. So I think approaching music abstractly gave me the ability to instantiate it uh, everywhere. And I think it also taught me something about self-teaching. Like recently I've tried getting into, into classical music because... Uh, at least traditionally, this is the thing which is thought to require the most rigor um, and traditional uh, teaching. I think it's essentially taught me, even if I'll never be a great classical performer, that there is nothing one can't really teach themselves in this mm. in this era. So I've been I've been enjoying. Uh, whatever connection I have with, with music. The other thing I'll, I'll, I'll say about it is that it's a, it's a very rewarding uh, learning process. We know, for example, that music uh, accesses our neurochemicals very directly. Uh, and if you teach yourself a little bit of theory and are able to instantiate it on an instrument without wasting your, your time or spending your time uh, tediously on learning the particulars of that instrument, you can instantly sit down and access your own dopamine loops. And so you don't really need to motiv uh, motivate yourself with music because you know, like you're giving your, your brain drugs. You know, who needs motivation to, to give themselves drugs uh, and, and, and learn something? So uh, I think, I think more people should be should be playing music. I think a lot of people don't realize how how easy it can be to approach if you take a sort of um, unstandard approach. And the unstandard approach, in your sense, was uh, understanding the theory first, and then just from the from the foundation of the theory, be able to then just take on any instrument and start creating something that sounds reasonably good. Yeah, or learning something yeah. that sounds reasonably good, and then <laughs> plugging into the, as you call them, the dopamine loops of your brain, allowing yourself to enjoy the process. Yeah. What about the uh, the pain in the ass, rigorous process of practice? So, so there's something about my dopamine loops, for example, that enjoys doing the same thing over and over and over again and watching myself improve. I think that's because, um music is more effective at uh, accessing us when it's played correctly. And I think you play, I'm, I'm positive that you play music much more correctly than I do. So if you are going to sit down and play something that you've learned, that piece will be much more satisfying 
to your ears and to your brain than if I were to play that piece just sitting down within, with an instrument. Uh, but it's sort of a trade-off with freedom and, and rigor uh, because even if I should be spending more, more of my time practicing rigorously, I know I don't have to to make me happy. So, Well, Jocko Willink, I think, has this saying uh, that discipline is freedom. Uh-huh. So maybe uh, maybe the repetition of uh, the disciplined repetition is actually one of the mechanisms of achieving freedom. It's another way to get to freedom. That it doesn't have to be a constraint, but in, in, in a sense unlocks greater sets of opportunity that then results in a deeper experience of freedom. Maybe, I mean, particularly if you're thinking about uh, discipline and uh, method for improvisation. Right. There are a million pieces that you could improvise with the same discipline in how to approach that improvisation. So I think I think that's it's true that discipline promotes freedom if you uh, insert a layer of of indirection because I think I, I think if you're if you're trying to learn one piece that was written 400 years ago um, and you're playing it over and over again, there is nothing personable, sorry, there's nothing right. personal or creative about that process, even if it's beautiful and satisfying. There has to be some sort of discipline applied to the creativity of self. So I think that uh, I think that is the the layer of indirection which reconciles both approaches to uh, freedom and discipline and enjoyment of music. Discipline applied to the creativity of self. Damn, Zev. <laughs> Thank you.